Hello everybody. Welcome to another session of previous year question discussion. And in today's session, we are going to discuss about unit 8 topic that is pedigree analysis. Now, I hope all of you already uh, know that pedigree analysis questions are very commonly asked in CSIR exam. Now, there are different patterns in which pedigree questions are asked. Sometimes they are coupled with uh, probability calculation. Sometimes you just have to, the chart is given, you have to analyze it and you have to say the, uh, uh, the, the, the inheritance pattern of certain diseases. And nowadays, some, some of the times what they do is they give the, uh, give the inheritance pattern at the same time they also give the pattern in which certain molecular markers are expressed or inherited passed on okay and on the basis of that you have to determine what kind of inheritance pattern is there and sometimes you also have to analyze the chart to find out the genotype of a certain parent so these are kind of questions which are usually asked in pedigree analysis in today's session i have sampled out questions one from each of this type so that you get a clear idea and a good idea about how to approach each of these different types of questions related to all this topic of pedigree analysis. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started. So the first question that I have here is, uh, says that the pedigree given below represents the genotype of four different loci for the children in generation three. Okay, so this is a chart given and along with that the genotype of uh, four different loci on a particular chromosome is given. Which chromosome it is, that is not mentioned anywhere. Now, which one of the given genotype is likely to represent the genotype of individual 2-1? So, who, who is individual 2-1? This female. Okay, so we are supposed to find out what will be the genotype of 2-1. Right. Now, how to do this question? So, in the third generation, clearly the third generation are children of 2, 1 and 2, 2. Okay. Now, what do you see here? That circle definitely means female, square means male. Now, in the circles, there, there are two chromosomes. So, each line is representing one chromosome. So, if there are two lines, means these are two homologous chromosomes. How do we know they are homologous? Because the same gene loci are present in the same order. Okay. So, these are the homologous chromosomes. So, 3, 1 and 3, 2 who are females have two homologous chromosomes of each type. Whereas, 3, 3 and 3, 4, they are males. And these two males, they are having only one chromosome of each type. Right. So, what does it tell us? So, this is the clue. Okay. So, from here we have to, uh, like we, we, can, we can determine that this is the chrom the low uh, the chromosome which is carrying this four different loci belongs to X chromosome. Okay, because X chromosome is the only chromosome which is present in two copies in females and one copy in males. Okay, so uh, this is the male. So males are having one one chromosome each. Right now, who is two one? Two one is mother of three three and three four. Okay, so the sons, okay, so they are the sons of this female here. Now, the sons receive their X chromosome only from their mother because sons have to get their Y chromosome from their father. Okay, so these two chromosomes are coming from the mother. So, who is mother? 2, 1, right? So, from here only what we can see? 2, 1's genotype we can determine. So, A1, A2, B1, B2, C1 or you can write it as C2, C1 does not make any difference and D1, D1. Okay, so from here we have seen or we have found out that 2 ones genotype, this is one of the possibility, okay, because 3, 3 and 3, 4 are males, they are having 1, 1 X chromosome and sons will always receive their X chromosome from their mother, okay. So, the X chromosomes that these sons are having for sure is coming from their mother, okay. So, mother's genotype has to be this, what I have written down here, okay. Now, you can check the options, alright. Now, for options when you check, so in options, so at least for uh, like A, B and C, 
the genes are the heterozygous, right? The genes A, B, and C are present in heterozygous condition. So now for option one, you see that here A2, A2, B1, B1. So here A1 and B, uh, sorry, A and B are present in homozygous. Even C is also, and D is also present in homozygous condition, okay? Which cannot be true. So you can cancel it out. For option two, what do we see? That A1, A1. So A is in homozygous condition. But according to our finding, A has to be in heterozygous condition. So this is also not possible. Eliminate it. Now option 3. Now option 3 is the only one where A, A, B, C, D, all the four genes are present in heterozygous condition. So it might be possible. Okay. Although according to our finding here, D is homozygous. Yet. Now option 4, if you see. So here also. C and D both are present in homozygous condition where according to us C has to be in heterozygous condition, right? So this also can be eliminated, okay? So now with this much finding also because there is no other option, so the best calculated risk, remember you have to take some of the time calculated risk, so the best calculated risk will be option 3, okay? But let's see how we can prove option 3. Uh, so, according to our finding here, D can be homozygous, D1, D1, okay. But here in option 3, it is saying D1, D2. So, is D2 possible? So, for that now, let's check this 3, 1 and 3, 2, okay, these two females. Now, females will get their X chromosome from mother and one X chromosome will come from father, okay. Now, father do not have any other X chromosome. He has only one X chromosome. So, whatever are the genes present on the X chromosome in father, so those genes will be without any recombination. They will be passed as it is in the same combination to the females. Okay. So, basically in 3, 1 and 3, 2, there will be one, one chromosome which will be having the exact same composition and that is the chromosome they are receiving from their father. Okay. That means the other chromosome they are receiving from their mother simple. So, when we see that, so you can see that this chromosome, okay, A2, B1, C2, D1, A2, B1, C2, D1. So, this is the chromosome that they are receiving from their father, okay. What does that mean? That this chromosome and this chromosome is coming from mother, okay. Now, in that you see, here it is D1, but in this it is D2. In 3, 2 individual, it is D2 present. So, the mother can be, mother has to be heterozygous for D. Alright. So, with this, you can see that option 3 is the correct answer. Okay. So, here you don't have to apply any hi-fi uh, knowledge. You just have to apply the basics of how the X chromosomes are inherited. But for that, the first thing that you have to realize that we are talking about the four locus, uh, lo four loci which are present on the X chromosome. Okay. So, this is how we can analyze and answer this kind of question. Now, moving on. Uh, this is the second type of question that I have got here and this question combines the pedigree chart with the calculation, okay, calculation of probability. So, in the following pedigree, individuals with shaded circle or shaded square show presence of recessive autosomal trait. The calculated risk of occurrence of this trait for 3, 1 is. So, here it is mentioned that the trait is recessive autosomal, okay. So, suppose we, uh, so here it will be uh, easier for you to understand if we consider a gene. So, suppose uh, there is a gene A, it has got two alleles, dominant allele is capital A, recessive allele is small, okay. Now, 2, 1 who is affected, okay. So, it is a recessive autosomal, that means 2, 1's genotype has to be small A, small A, okay. Now, if 2, 1 is small A, small A, 1, 1 and 1, 2, they both are unaffected, so, they both can, so unaffected parents are having an affected offspring in autosomal recessive uh, trait. That means 1-1 one, one and 1-2 one, are heterozygous. Okay, so they have a recessive allele but present in hidden condition. Okay, now in the same way if we see the other side of the pedigree. So, 2-4 uh, is affected. For sure, her genotype will be small a, small a. Okay, uh, 1, 3 is also affected. So, his genotype is also small a, small a. Okay. Now, what is the uh, question? The calculated risk of occurrence of this trait in 3, 1. 
okay now 3 1 will have the trait so if if only if 2 3 is heterozygous okay otherwise if 2 see 2 3 is no, uh, normal so the normal individual can have two genotypes capital a capital a or capital a small a okay now if 2 3 is capital a capital a okay so in that case 2, 4 is small a, small a. So, in that case, there is no possibility that 3, 1 will ever show the disease. Right? Okay. So, 2, 3 can never be homozygous dominant. Like, it can be homozygous dominant, but if it is homozygous dominant, then the probability of showing the trait in 3, 1 will become completely zero. Okay. But at the same time, there is another possibility that 2, 3 is heterozygous. Okay. Now, if 2, 3 is heterozygous, now the cross will become like this and then there is possibility of showing the homozygous recessive trait. Okay. Now, the parents that is 2, 1, uh, sorry, 1, 1 and 1, 2 are heterozygous. Okay. So, heterozygous parents when they are crossed, so you can make a bullet square. So, these are the possible genotypes. Okay. Now, in that case, uh, what is the chance of... Uh, so, th this 2-3 uh, who is a normal individual. So, that normal individual can either be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Right? So, what is the probability of the normal progeny to be heterozygous? Now, you see here this part, okay, 1 by 4th part is affected. So, phenotypically it is different, okay. Now, the rest of the part that I am circling in, let's say, blue, okay, they are normal. Now, among this normal progeny, who, what is the proportion of heterozygote? 1 part, 2 part. So, 2 by 3 is the part, is, is, the, is the chance of a normal progeny to be heterozygote in this case, right. So, here becomes the probability of 2, 3. So, where is it here? So, 2, 3 heterozygote, there is no 100% chance. Okay, there is a probability. Probability of how much? 2 by 3. Okay, so 2 by 3 is the probability that 2, 3 will be heterozygote. Right? Now, for the third generation to be affected, there are three independent events have to occur simultaneously. Okay. Now, what are those independent events? Write it down here. Okay. So, 3, 1. Three, one to be homozygous recessive. Okay. It needs three different uh, events, right? So, what are the different events that are needed? First, 2, 3, who is the father, has to be heterozygote. Second event, the mother, who is 2, 4, and it's already given that she is homozygous recessive, okay? And another thing is just father is heterozygote and mother is homozygous recessive will not make the third generation affected because third generation again can be half of it can be heterozygote and normal other half can will be affected. Okay. So another thing that is required or the third event third independent event which is required here is that uh, the crossing of heterozygote and homozygous recessive produces homozygous recessive. Okay. So, these three events have to occur simultaneously. Then only the third generation will be affected. Okay. So, probability of 3, 1 to be homozygous recessive will be equal to, remember we have to apply the multiplication rule. Okay. So, probability of 2, 3 to be heterozygote multiplied with probability of 2, 4 to be homozygous recessive multiplied with the probability that cross of heterozygote and homozygous recessive produces homozygous recessive. Okay. Now, what is the probability of 2, 3 to be heterozygote? We have already calculated it, which is 2 by 3. 
probability of 2 4 to be homozygous recessive now it is already given in the chart that 2 4 is affected so if 2 4 is directly affected means the probability of her to be affected becomes 1 because for sure she is affected right for any event which is actually happening now or which has already happened probability of that happening is 1 okay and then what is the chance of this two crossing and producing homozygous recessive so that will be 1 by 2 okay when you solve it you will get the probability of th uh, 3 1 to be at the risk of showing the trait is 1 by 3 so answer will be option d all right so this is the second type of question which can be asked where they mix the pro probability uh, the, the pedigree analysis chart with the calculation of probability now next question that i have here is uh, for a normal individual in in normal individual there are three mst2 restriction sites two flanking the beta globin gene and one within the gene in individuals affected by a disease, a single nucleotide polymorphism in the beta globin gene abolishes the internal MST2 recognition sites. The RFLP pattern for this locus obtained by hybridization using a probe internal to the flanking MST2 sites from three siblings of a family is shown in the image. Based on the profile which is given in the image, what is the nature of the genetic disorder? Okay. Now, here what you have to find out that in which, uh, what is the inheritance pattern shown by the genetic disorder. Okay. Now, and in that genetic disorder, what is given to us? They have not shown us any pedigree chart. Instead, they have given us the table which shows the inheritance pattern of a RFLP marker. Okay. Now, what is the condition that is given to us? That in the normal allele, there are three mst2 restriction sites in this beta globin gene so suppose if beta globin gene is here so there are three restriction sites one on both side and one in the middle okay so in normal individuals basically will produce how many bands when you do the digestion and separate the bands one band and two band one and two okay now what happens in the deceased person The individual who are deceased or having the disorder, sorry, or I can say the mu affected allele. So, in case of affected allele, what happens? The single nucleotide polymorphism in the beta globin gene abolishes the internal MST2 recognition site, means in that case. One recognition site here, one recognition site here. The internal recognition site has been um, has been compromised. Okay. Now, in that case, how many bands will be produced when we conduct RFLP? So, here only one single band will be produced. Right. So, the RFLP pattern of this locus obtained by hybridization using a probe internal to the flanking MST2 site from three siblings in the family is shown in the image. Okay, so basically what do we see that the individuals who are having the normal allele will produce two bands. Okay, the individual who are having the affected allele will produce one band. Okay, now you see the normal sun. Okay, now normal sun is showing three bands. One 1.35, one 1.15 and one 0 0.2. Now clearly when you see this, okay, so you know that this adds up to 1.35. Right? What does that mean? That these two bands have come from the normal allele. Whereas this band, okay, which is the addition of this two, the addition of this two will be what? When this internal uh, cleavage site has been compromised. So this is coming from the affected allele. Okay. Now, how it is possible? Yes, it is possible because that means the individual is having a pair of homologous chromosome. One is having the normal allele. And one is having the affected allele. Okay, so that's why this normal allele is producing these two bands. Whereas this affected allele is producing this band. Okay, now in case of daughter, what do we see? That daughter has only normal. Okay, 
that means daughter is again daughter also has to have two uh, homologous chromosomes and both the homologous chromosomes must be having the normal allele that's why she is having only these two bands now the affected son affected son has only the affected allele okay now you have to say what is the uh, what is the nature of the genetic disorder okay now see this is son this is son now this son we have already established that he is having a pair of homologous chromosomes two copies of this particular gene right so two copies of the particular gene is only possible in case of autosomal chromosomes in the males because the x chromosomes are not present in two copies one copy of x and one of y is present Okay. So, that means the gene that we are talking about cannot be present on X chromosome. So, immediately you can eliminate the X chromosome related options. Now, what we have autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. Now, what we see that this individual, the affected son is homozygous for the affected allele and he is affected. The, there is a son who is having one of the allele. Okay. So, he is heterozygous for the affected allele. But he is not affected. How is it possible? Only possible in the situation when the disease is caused by the autosomal recessive allele. Okay, so the individuals who are homozygous for the recessive allele, they only will be affected. The heterozygotes will be normal. Okay, so what will the nature of the genetic disorder? It has to be autosomal recessive. Okay, so this is how you have to analyze, you have to study the table, you have to link it with the information that is given to us and accordingly you have to analyze the table to get to the asked question. Now this is a very interesting question that is here and it was there in last year's CSR exam. So the pedigree below is in reference to Angelman syndrome which is caused by mutation in UBE3A gene on chromosome 15. The gene is also paternally imprinted. Individuals showing Angelman syndrome has not been indicated in the given pedigree. Individual 1-1 does not have AS. Individual marked with dots are carrier of this particular mutation. Which one of the following options list individuals all of whom are likely to show the Angelman syndrome? Now, to answer this question, okay, you have to have the understanding of how exactly this Angelman syndrome is caused. Now, from where you will get that understanding? That understanding you will get from the mutation section, okay, as well as you will get it from the topic called as genomic imprinting. Now, what are these? So, what is this genomic imprinting? See, uh, no, uh, so, so for, for, for Angelman syndrome, what is happening is, in case of Angelman syndrome, there is a deletion in chromosome number 50, okay? But this region is also uh, uh, parentally imprinted, okay? So, what happens is, when chromosome number, when the same uh, deletion is inherited from the mother, okay? Then the individual suffer from a disease called as Angelman syndrome. But if the same uh, disease, uh, sorry, if the same mutation is inherited from father, then the individual suffer from a different kind of disease called as Prader-Willi syndrome. Okay, why? Because in this case, the segment in the other chromosome, in the homologous chromosome, is uh, imprinted uh, parentally. Okay, so. Basically, what is the understanding that this deletion, okay, same deletion, if if inherited from father, then this deletion causes a syndrome called as Prader Wigge syndrome. Okay, in short, it is known as PWS. But if it is inherited from mother, in that case what it causes? It causes Angelman syndrome. Okay, the mutation is same, the same deletion in the same region on chromosome number 50. But the deletion, if it is inherited from mother, it causes Angelman syndrome. If it is inherited from father, it causes uh, uh, Prader-Willi syndrome. 
okay now in the pedigree chart what is given to us anybody who is represented with a dot they have the deletion okay so you have to say out of this individuals who all are supposed to show angelman syndrome okay so very simple what we have to do we have to analyze it and see who all are getting that dot from their mother okay so in this case one one is not uh, having the angelman syndrome is clearly mentioned okay now in the second generation what do we see that both 2 2 and 2 5 they are getting this in, uh, deletion from their father because father only has the deletion and they are receiving the deletion from father so if they are receiving it from father they cannot have angelman syndrome moving on to the next generation in case of 3 2 now 3 2 is and 3 1 Three two and three one are getting their um, uh, deletion from their mother. Okay, so if they are getting deletion from their mother, now then they will be affected with Angelman syndrome. So both three one and three two are affected. Now what about three five? Now three five is a female, but here she is getting it from her father. So that's why she will not be affected with Angelman syndrome. Okay, because she is not getting in her, in, not inheriting the mutation from their father, uh, from their mother. Okay, so they are getting it from their father, so they will not be affected with Angelman syndrome. And in the fourth generation, what do we see? That again, four two is receiving the in her uh, the the mutation from her mother. Okay, so again, four two will be affected. So this question is very very simple. If you know the idea about like what. and how this angelman syndrome is caused because in the question that is not mentioned anywhere now when you know that when you link it with the pedigree chart this question is very easy and can be actually answered in less than 30 seconds so 3 1 3 and 4 2 are the individuals who will be affected with angelman syndrome so answer will be option b 3 1 3 and 4 all right So with this, I am going to stop the uh, session here. We have discussed the different types of questions which can be asked from pedigree analysis. Please try to solve more, and if there is any further question that you want me to solve here in the video, please mention in the comment section. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.